I found this really cool app the other day when I was browsing Reddit. It's called Uptime Kuma. Now this is a predecessor to what used to be StatPing, and I say that because StatPing is no longer being maintained. StatPing back in the day was an amazing tool, and I think it still is. It's just not maintained, so that sets it up for some security vulnerabilities in the in the near future. So this is a great replacement for StatPing, and not only is it a great replacement, it also does a few more things that StatPing does not do, including checking your SSL certificates for expiration dates. So if you plug in any domain names, it will tell you how long until those certificates expire. So along with that, you can also monitor HTTP, website addresses, TCP, you can ping IP addresses and or domain names, and you can check DNS records. Today I'll be installing Uptime Kuma using Docker, and I'll be using this Docker Compose stack right here actually. I will grab this and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to be using Portainer, so I'm gonna be cheating a little bit. I won't be using command line interface. So I'll just grab this and I'll run over to Portainer and plug it right in. Here I am on my Portainer dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and go into my test lab. And here under stacks, I'll click stacks and click on add a new stack. I will paste what I just copied in here. I'm just going to change one thing here and that is where the Docker stores the data files. And I'll put that in Docker slash uptime kuma i'm going to call it uptime kuma one because i already have a folder in there called uptime kuma i will call it uptime and that should get things started so if you click deploy stack down here at the bottom and we can see that it is starting up everything looks good here we have a healthy up and running uptime kuma so let's go ahead and check it out on our published port here you have to create your admin account it does not come with a pre-configured admin account so go ahead and for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna put in admin and then admin as my password and then admin again. And we're going to get logged in, admin, admin. I'm not going to save that password, but here we are on the dashboard. It looks pretty bare. We don't have any monitors in here right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the settings. I'm going to change this to dark mode just to save you guys the stress on your eyes. This looks pretty good. So what you want to do is probably go into the settings and change a few things here first. And I would set up a time zone, which this one's fine for me because I'm on the East Coast anyways. I don't plan on exposing this to the internet, so I'm just going to leave this ticked as discouraged search engines anyways. If you want to change your password, you can do that here. You can also disable authentication so it doesn't require a username and password to log in to view your dashboard. You can do that all from here. One thing I did notice is there's a blue button here at the top that says new update. Um, it does look like if I click this, it looks like there is a 1.5.2, but if we look back over on the dashboard at the bottom, down here at the bottom, it says uptime Kuma version 1.3.2. So what I'm going to do is go back over to Portainer. I'm going to click on uptime Kuma here. I will click on recreate and I will make sure pull the latest image is ticked here. And then we'll click on recreate and that should update us to the latest version. So let's do that before we get started and do anything further. You can see that it is working here. It has finished, so let's go ahead and pop back over and see what we got. If we click on settings down here in the bottom, it does say version 1.5.2 now and the blue button up here has disappeared. So that's a good thing, that's good. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and add our first monitor. Let's click on the add one link here. I'm going to add one for the home lab wiki. I'll just punch in the address here, homelab.wiki. And the heartbeat will stay 60. I'll keep the retries at zero. I think I'm going to have everything else here just how it is by default. And I will click on save and here we are. So it says added successfully number of 200, which is okay. It shows us here that it is up and running and it does show us that the certificate expires in 299 days. That's really cool. That is really cool. What this is doing is every 60 seconds, it's checking to see if the homelab.wiki is up and running and it will come back and tell us what the response time is, what the average response time is, if it's gone up or down, you'll see a red pill in here instead of a green pill. And you can see every 60 seconds, another one of these pills will fill up. Whichever color it is, if it's up, it'll be green. If it's down, it'll be red. And it does all of this while displaying a beautiful little chart here on the bottom. You can actually hover over this to see what your response time was at each specific 60 second interval. So this is actually really cool to look at with all this data here on this chart. If we go back into the settings here, we can see that we can set up a notification. Uh, it looks like there's all kinds of different uh, pre-installed notification types. 
including Telegram, Discord, some of the more popular ones like Slack, Rocket Chat, Pushover. I do see Lunacy in here, which is interesting because that actually isn't a specifically used for sending push notifications. That is actually something that you can use to tie sonar and radar in <laughs> to control uh, your media setup. So that's interesting to see that in there. Push Bullet is another popular one. Actually, Mattermost is in there. That's interesting. Um, I did actually set this up and get it running with Lunacy. It worked really well. I, I set up a couple tests and I did take one of my servers down and it did notify me that, hey, it said, look, your server has been, been down and here's a notification letting you know that, that your server went down. It's really cool to see that these are in here and that you can use this to set up notifications. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add a new monitor. This time I am going to do a ping type and let's do the Cloudflare DNS resolver. So I'll go ahead and paste in the 1.1.1. The friendly name will just be Cloudflare DNS. Everything else I'll just leave as default and I'll click save. And it looks like we do have a success. It is up and that's interesting because here it's checking the ping versus the HTTP or HTTPS status. So we're getting a seven millisecond response time. I added the Google DNS also, which is averaging about the same response time. And we can see here on the chart what the response times were for each interval. I went ahead and filled it out a little bit and added a couple more monitors. I think a great use case for Uptime Kuma would be to monitor cameras on your network. For example, IP cameras that you have. Uh, on your network that are separated in different VLANs. You can definitely use this to monitor those. Also, if you have websites that are out there hosting on different servers, you can also use this to check the up status of your websites as well. Whatever it might be that you're trying to keep an eye on, I think Uptime Kuma is a great tool to do the job for that, especially if you set up notifications. Another one of my favorite things about Uptime Kuma is the fact that we can see our certificate expiration dates here. So we can keep track of that as well on here. It does appear that the dev is very active on this project. It is pretty new, so that is to be expected, I guess. The last commit was three minutes ago. So it is good to see that this is actively being developed and new releases are rolling out fairly regularly as we can see here. If you'd like to donate or sponsor the developer of Uptime Kuma, you can do so by clicking on the Open Collective link here on their GitHub page. It'll take you to their Open Collective page where you can donate and give back to the developer. It's nice to be able to do that for developers who create open source applications for us to use for absolutely nothing. That's going to be it for today. Be sure to check out the Home Lab Wiki for more tutorials and guides just like today's. Today's wasn't too difficult. All it is is one Docker Compose stack. And that's it. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And click the bell icon so you know when the videos drop on the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.